I think uh, it was as early as seven or eight o'clock this morning when I started getting alarms about this target letter uh, to Donald Trump. I think he posted about it first and then it was confirmed that yes, indeed, he has received a target letter from the special counsel that has been investigating the January 6th insurrection and the events leading up to the insurrection, including the attempts by Trump and allies to overturn the legitimate election of Joe Biden as president. Here we are talking about a 2024 election and still dealing with the fallout of the 2020 election. But uh, what do you make of this news that we knew was coming But today is the day where Donald Trump uh, has been warned that he is likely to be indicted yet again uh, on federal charges. This is the fundamental charge. This is about America's democracy. Uh, There's huge other charges going on around the country, including the security documents and things like that. That's about the security of the country. This is about the security of our democracy. It's been long, long overdue. It's taken a very long time, but this is the way the system works very slowly. But it is got to have him and his allies in Congress have to be particularly worried because it took a lot of people to almost pull off this coup on January 6th. This was not a one man operation. So the big question to me is not who is the target, but who else is going to be uh, brought to account? That is an e- maybe an even bigger deal. Yes, uh, just because Trump has received a target letter, and this is a letter that the Department of Justice sends to individuals that are mm-hmm. likely to be indicted. It gives you an opportunity to come in and talk to the uh, prosecuting attorneys to tell them your side of the story to see if you have something that might be exculpatory or something that might uh, you know, exonerate you or in some way cause the uh, indictment not to move forward. Now, we know Donald Trump, uh, Dr. Dominguez, is not going to show up. Uh, he's going to just, you know, stay in his little uh, cubby hole and post on his social media site and make attacks against the special counsel, make attacks against our law enforcement agencies, our judicial system, and just attack, attack, attack. We don't know what charges he might be indicted on, although, uh, Experts are opining that it might be something like obstruction of an official proceeding and conspiracy to defraud defraud the government. Now, we know that Jared Kushner was called into the uh, special counsel's uh, office and gave testimony. And one of the questions has to do with what Trump knew during the time that he was engaged in his conduct, uh, what he believed, what his intentions were. And did he really believe he had won <clears throat> the election. I think I saw something where Jared Kushner had testified that he said Donald Trump really thought he won the election. What do you make of that? I think you're on mute, Dr. Dabingo. There have there have definitely been several instances where there have been other people, General Milley, some of his other staff members who have definitely said that he was aware that he lost the election. One aide talked about walking into his office and he said, can you believe that I lost to this effing guy? Uh, Milley was in conversation with him about some potential war plans and, and Trump said something to the effect of, you know, let's let the next guy handle it. And so there have been several instances that have proven that Trump was fully aware that he lost the election. So that's not number one. And number two, you know, as Rafe was talking about, you know, it's it's long overdue. We can all agree on that. But let's also be mindful of the fact that as I believe the New York Times or USA Today reported a few weeks ago, the, the Justice Department didn't even look at this for about 14 months after January 6th. Like they dragged their feet for over a year. And I believe it was probably the testimony of Cassidy Hutchinson during the January 6th uh, committee hearings that from what I hear really rattled people at the Justice Department. And that's when they started doing the work. They were going after lower level people beforehand. When will Merrick Garland realize that this kind of hands off approach because you don't want to seem political? It is political. So, you know, we're glad that they finally arrived, but it should have happened this time last year or six months ago. And we know that Trump is going to drag this out to try to hopefully get into office or or use the election as an excuse. But shame on the Justice Department for not doing its job from the beginning. But I am thankful that the January 6th Commission lit the fire under their behinds. I am so glad you said that. I have been saying from day one that Joe Biden made some phenomenal choices uh, when he named his cabinet. And he made what I believe are two 
really poor choices. And one was Merrick Garland to be the U.S. Attorney General. Judge possibly, maybe, yes, no problem with him being appointed to the appellate court for, you know, in that D.C. appellate court or even for the Supreme Court. But he does not have the the what I'll call the, the chops or the heart of a prosecutor. He seems yeah. so fearful, so timid, as you said, so afraid to appear, quote unquote, political by definition. Donald Trump is a politician. So That's anything right. you do to Donald Trump, indict him or not indict him, is going to be seen as political by some group of people. And you are not going to ever be able to demonstrate to those hardcore <clears throat> Trump supporters that anything the Department of Justice does, the FBI or any agency does, as it relates to holding Trump accountable, they will never believe it's objective, it's fair. Because fundamentally, they believe Trump is above the law and that he uh, enjoys privileges and rights that no one else in this country enjoy. So That's this right. this notion of hands off only now gets us in this. I think it's even worse because now folks are going to say you're piling on because it looks like rape. This dude is is going to be <laughs> indicted by the special counsel. And this is just on. I mean, there's so many potentials here. The Fake electors, right? So engaging in this process, which you know is object, uh, uh, obstructing an official proceeding, uh, moving forward with these fraudulent uh, electors. But then remember all the money that he raised on this lie. So you have the potential for mail fraud. Uh, you have the potential for you know other kind of fraudulent <laughs> charges related to raising money, uh, and. You also, obviously, something that's about to happen in Georgia at the beginning of August, the end of July. Politically, how is it that Republicans can continue to be the law and order party, a party pretend to be the law and order party, and support Donald Trump, who's now likely in the next week will be thrice indicted <laughs> and two times impeached? Oh, I, I still think he's the likely nominee uh, for president of the uh, on the Republican ticket. I think the Republicans can't live with him and they can't live without him. Uh, they're in the very anomalous position. Um, I still don't see anybody taking the nomination away from him. Can I put in a good word for Merrick Garland, which I think is largely <laughs> undeserved since I had the same feeling. His appointment of Jack Smith as the special counsel. When I first heard it, I thought my heart just sank. It was like, oh, God, we're just going to, like, throw this football off and nothing is going to happen. This guy is unbelievable. Sure. And if they had put if they had picked him like two years ago, we'd be two years ahead. And also a good word, as Dr. Dabinga pointed out, let's say a good word about Congress, for God's sake, <laughs> who we all yeah, enjoy yes. running down. Not since the Senate Watergate hearings has there been a set of hearings that so shook up the justice system that was doing nothing. Mm -hmm. that they had to take action because in this country congress can't do it by themselves all they can do is light a fire under the justice department and they did they ran some of the best hearings ever so now we can go back to making fun of congress but i mean I just no no no. you're right that's a great point rafe <laughs> I, i'm writing down benny thompson i'm thinking about liz cheney i'm thinking mm -hmm. about some of those uh superstars of that uh those hearings i mean it was so well done uh, laid out in, in clear terms with graphics, great testimony that they were able to take from the depositions that have been taken. And again, the, the Republicans have to be kicking themselves for being so obstinate that they wouldn't oh. allow any of their members no. to sit Absolutely. on that committee. And that committee did such an outstanding job, uh, Rafe, as you said, to the point, Dr. Dabinga, that you made originally, <laughs> that it lit a fire under the Justice Department. It was almost as if, you know, they handed the Justice Department a case like, here, guys, here's the book. Here's the playbook. <laughs> you don't have anything to do. Here are the witnesses. We've already deposed them. We already have their admissions. We already have all of their statements. All you have to do uh, is now, you know, put the bow on this package, which you're right, uh, Rafe, uh, this special counsel uh, is really, really going after these cases. Uh, obviously not afraid in this recent motion Trump filed to uh, postpone his case involving, you know, misuse of classified documents indefinitely. 
<laughs> I mean, the special counsel wrote a scathing reply opposition, again, laying out that there are rules set by our courts, uh, their laws that everybody must follow. And the nerve of, of Trump to come in and say, because I'm running for president or because there is a lot of documents, I need this trial to be postponed until basically I die. <laughs> Which is really like, <laughs> I, y- y'all right. do this trial, you know, at, at my funeral or something because <laughs> I, I can't participate in it. But I, I hear what you're saying about them sticking, them being the MAGA crowd, sticking with Trump. But John Kasich, uh, Dr. Dabinga was on this morning, one show I was watching. And he said, give the Republicans time. You know, John Kasich, former governor of Ohio, former presidential candidate himself, he thinks that there is some breaks happening in the Republican base and that this this piling on, this this cumulative effect is going to cause the party to break with Trump. Do you think Kasich has a point? Uh, No, I don't, to be quite honest. (laughs) When we watched uh, President Biden's interview with 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 Nicole Wallace a few weeks ago, he he talked about how there were about six Republicans who come up to him and talk about all of their problems with Trump, but they're afraid to go public. So I believe that you have the people like the Mitt Romney's of the world, you know, who are always going to speak up and say certain things. But I believe that these these Republican uh, senators, they're too afraid to speak up. And you also got folks in the House who are going crazy down there with everything going on. Marjorie Taylor Greene and all of these guys, the House is for the most part in lockstep with Donald Trump as it relates to their leadership and Kevin McCarthy. And so McConnell hasn't spoken up, Lindsey Graham. And so even if there are a couple of senators that do speak up, the main leaders aren't going to speak up and say anything. And so really at the end of the day, I, I, I hear what Kasich is saying, but we can't, and we also can't wait for that. And we also have to be mindful of the fact that whether Trump stays the nominee or not, you know, Democrats can't get comfortable in thinking that this is wrapped up because now you got these groups like No Label, you know, looking at Flo and running another candidate, maybe a, a mansion and, and, and Logan, uh, Hogan ticket or something like that. Logan, uh, former governor of, of Maryland, you know, uh, ticket or something like we don't know. You got uh, Cornell West and all these other people out there. There's so many opportunities to have parts of the vote siphoned off by different factions that I know there are a lot of people just praying that these indictments keep coming, but he's not going anywhere. You can run and be indicted. And so people cannot let their guard down thinking that he's going to go away with another indictment because his fundraising numbers just keep rising as well. Well, you're right about that. We definitely can't sit on our laurels. We can't rest on our laurels. We have to be aggressive, which is why I started the show talking about that pack that's going to be engaging black voters. So yeah. important. And yesterday on the show, I had Ro Khan, a congressman from California. He said... He thought a Donald Trump, Tim Scott ticket would be a problem for Democrats because he said Tim Scott is uh, disarming, uh, Mm -hmm. seemed to be a reasonable, sensible Republican, obviously an African-American man. Uh, So you're right. There are lots of ways that the Democrats can lose in 2024. 